Hey everybody, I'm Anthony, and this is the Dynamic Review. Every Thursday I review my top three comics that came out this week, along with giving them my own personal rating. Now, just a reminder, these reviews may contain spoilers, so listen at your own risk. So without any further ado, let's get started. Alright, starting off my top three picks this week was Venom, issue 35. In this issue, we have Flash, a.k.a. Agent Venom, who is confronted by Eddie Brock, a.k.a. Toxin, at the school where Flash works. Eddie offers Flash the choice that they can go to an isolated area and finish off their grudge match, or if he refuses, then he would attack him anyway in the school where innocent students and children will get hurt. Now, the two symbiote hosts are interrupted when the school is attacked by these alien, cyborg, hobo, zombies called symbiote slayers. These symbiote slayers begin attacking students, forcing Flash and Eddie Brock to put aside their differences to team up and protect the students and the school. During the battle, the symbiote slayers team up on Eddie Brock, beating him to a pulp, until at the last second, Flash shows up in his full Venom form. Then, after that, the symbiote team takes down the slayers in no time at all. Once the battle is over, Eddie is back and focused on wanting to fight and kill Venom, almost to the point where I'd say he's just like Vegeta. But Flash convinces Eddie that he deserves the chance to try to use the Venom for good. And, eventually Eddie agrees on one condition, that when Flash loses control, he'll be the one to swoop in and kill him. When Flash responds to that, saying, if I ever do lose control, I'd want to be killed. In this, in this comic, I enjoyed the art, I enjoyed the action, I, enjoy, I really enjoyed the dialogue, which is something I didn't think I would enjoy. Um, I wasn't too keen on these symbiote slayers because they just seemed like stupid, what, cyborg, alien, hobo, robot, zombie things that went after whatever the dominant predator was on the planet. They would go after those, and in this case it was the symbiotes. So I thought that was kind of dumb, so these alien things come down, and then they go and attack whatever is the strongest in that environment. So obviously they're going to be killed anyway. But, you know, either way, I think this was a great comic. Um, definitely go pick it up. It's fun to read, and it kind of gets you excited for what's going to happen in the future, because apparently this is leading up to something big. My number two pick this week was Red Hood and the Outlaws, annual issue number one. Now, I can easily say this annual is an upgrade to what the title has been up till now. Uh, first of all, the art was amazing. Um, I really enjoyed the art by Al Barinovo. Innovo? Sorry, I, I just butchered your name. Uh, I enjoyed his art style. Um, I also liked how this story, we kind of stepped away from Jason Todd for a little bit. Not to the point where he wasn't in the book at all, but we got to focus on other members of the team. Uh, that member mainly being Arsenal, who has quickly become my favorite member of the Outlaws. Uh, this issue also gave us a better look at his relationship with Green Arrow, who guest starred in this issue. Um, we got to see a little bit more about their past, um, starting with the fact that Roy Harper, Arsenal, wasn't really his sidekick, in a sense. He was more like his techie or his um, uh, his partner. He was kind of like what like Lucius Fox was to Batman in the um, in the movies and in the TV or in the comic books now. Uh, so yeah, I got that Lucius Fox feel from what he used to be. He just built all of the gadgets and the tech for Green Arrow um, until eventually, I guess, he tried to be a sidekick and. Green Arrow didn't want the responsibility of having his blood in his hands, or he actually just cared too much to put Roy in harm's way. Um, I guess eventually we'll, we'll find out more about that, um, either in the upcoming episodes or possibly in the Green Arrow title. Um, another big appearance in this issue was the first look at the New 52's Cheshire and Bronze Tiger. Uh, I honestly enjoyed Cheshire. I enjoyed her in the um, Young Justice TV show. But in this one, I, I, liked, the, I liked her chemistry she had with Roy. Um, there are quick fights I thought was funny. Um, I, I thought it was cool how each fingernail, each of her fingernails contained a different type of poison, and you know that that was interesting. Uh, I'm not a big fan of her new ability, which is intangibility and teleporting, but I guess now she lives up to her name Cheshire. Um, and she also seems to know a little bit more about Jason Todd's past. Um, I guess here in issue 21 and up, we'll find out more about uh, about Cheshire and Bronze Tiger's involvement in the Outlaw title. Finally, this brings me to my number one pick this week, being Scott Snyder's The Wake, issue number one. Now, this has been a highly anticipated title published by Vertigo, which focuses on a marine biologist named Dr. Lee Archer, who specializes in the songs that undersea mammals make, such as dolphins and whales. Uh, she is approached by the Department of Homeland Security, and they ask her to help them identify a noise they have picked up. Um, after she says no, they don't give her really the choice to say no, and after offering her several deals, such as to get her son back, 
um, to get accepted back into um, the scientific community. Um, she agrees, and next thing she knows, she's being flown out to the Arctic Circle, where she is taken underwater in a submarine to this deep sea oil rig, um, where they are keeping something, or they are looking for something. Um, the last page kind of says it all. I won't spoil that for you, but this is definitely a title to pick up. Um, it lives up to all of Scott Snyder's previous stories where he tells amazing stories. Uh, this issue didn't reveal that much, but it was a great pickup. It was a great cliffhanger to get me excited for the next um, for the next issue. The art was really great by Murphy. Um, his, the the style that he uses is not not different, but it's just something I don't pick up that often. So it was great eye candy for me who sees kind of the same thing all the time. And this is a this is a definitely a great change than what I usually pick up. So this definitely made my number one just because um, Scott Snyder's name was on it and you know I expect great things from him so I obviously expected this to be great and which it was. Finally this brings us to the rating portion of our episode. For Venom issue 35 due to its art, dialogue, and action I will give it a 3.5 out of 5. Next for Red Hood and the Outlaws annual issue number one due to its character development, the art, and the action and the story, I'm going to give it a four and a half out of five. And finally, Scott Snyder's The Wake, issue number one, due to its art, due to the story, and due to the, the anticipation and the cliffhanger, I will give a 4.5 out of five. All right, that's it for this episode of The Dynamic Review. Please tune in again on Monday for a brand new episode of The Dynamic Buzz in which I bring the latest in comic book news along with my suggestions on the comments to pick up that week. Then tune again on Thursday for a new episode of The Dynamic Review in which I bring you my top three comics and give them my own personal rating. Uh, I know this week I didn't uh, post a video in time to make it on Thursday, but I'm going to be hopefully, hopefully getting in on a better schedule which I can update regularly. Um, also, I'm looking for a new slogan to put at the end of the episodes because, you know, that's the buzz, just isn't creative, isn't original, isn't cool. Um, as I always say, visit our website at www.thedynamicbuzz.com, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, leave us a comment, subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, let us know what you think of the episodes, um, you know, keep it nice, I'll respond nice. Uh, if you see anything that, you'd like to ch that you think we should change or update, I'd love to hear from you. So, that's it. I'll see you guys on Monday.